Hey, what's going on? Yeah, man, I'm Mr. Garthwee here. And today we'll be looking at a Cape Pure Mathematics Unit 1 question, all right, in trigonometry. That's module two of the syllabus, right? Yes. So we're looking at trigonometry and we're looking at how to find general solutions of trigonometric equations. Okay. That is what we'll be looking at. Yes, so that is what we're looking at. All right, general solutions of trigonometric equations. So the question says, find the general solution of the equation, part one, cos theta minus the square root of three sine theta equals zero, part two, two cos theta plus one equals zero, and part three, two sine theta minus one equals zero. All right, now I have some notes here to the side about general solutions, but we'll, we'll look at that soon, all right? Let's start part one of the question. So we're looking at part one, solution. Okay, good. So part one says we have to find the general solution of cos theta minus the square root of three sine theta equals zero. Okay, great. So let us solve this equation now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the negative square root of three sine theta to the right hand side. All right, it will become positive. So what I will get here is cos theta being equal to the square root of three times sine theta. Okay, good. That is what I have. Then what I'm going to do after here now is to divide both sides of the equation by cos theta, all right? So if I divide the left-hand side by cos theta, I will get one, all right? Cos theta divided by cos theta is one, is equal to, if I divide the right hand side now by cos theta, all right, I will get the square root of three multiplied by sine theta divided by cos theta, right? So I have square root three times sine theta divided by cos theta. Now we remember that from trigonometry that sine theta divided by cos theta is represented as tan theta, all right? So sine over cos is tan, great. So you see that now I have an equation in terms of tan, okay? So I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation now by the square root of three, and what I will get is tan theta being equal to one divided by, one divided by the square root of three, okay? That is what I have, good. Now I want to find the general solution of this equation. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here now to my notes that I have to the right, and we're gonna look at what it says. So note, it says that if I have tan theta being equal to some value k, where k is a real number, then theta is going to be equal to the tan inverse of k. All right, so I'll take the inverse tan of k, and whatever value that is, that's going to be equal to some angle alpha, okay? And the general solution is theta equals the angle alpha plus n pi, where n is a member of the set of integers, okay? And the angle alpha is called the principal value, okay? It's called the principal value. So that value that you will get, it's going to be an acute angle, all right? Most likely it's going to be an acute angle. So let's solve this equation here. So my general solution is theta is equal to the tan inverse of one over the square root of three. All right, so my angle alpha, let me just write it here for you. My angle alpha is going to be equal to the tan inverse of one divided by the square root of three. Okay, one divided by the square root of three. Good. and if you should put that in your calculator, all right, assuming that your calculator is in radian mode, you should get pi 
over six radians, okay? So my general solution is going to be my angle alpha, all right, so that's pi over six radians plus n pi, all right? So theta is going to be equal to pi over six plus n pi, where, where n is a member of the set of integers. Okay, great. That is my general solution. All right, so just going back over here now. All right, so my general solution for tan is going to be the angle alpha plus n pi. All right, where alpha is the tan inverse of k. Okay, good. So we're now finished now with part one of the question. Okay, so we're finished with part one. Let's know the part two, which says two cos theta plus one equals zero. All right, so let's scroll down here, part two. Solution. So we have two cos theta plus one equals zero. All right, now if I want to make cos theta d, the subject of this equation, all right, I'm going to have to take the one to the right hand side of the equation, it will become negative, and then divide both sides of the equation by two from there. Okay, so what we're going to have is two cos theta being equal to negative one. All right, and then if I divide both sides of that equation by two, I will get cos theta being equal to negative a half. Okay, good. So what is going to be my general solution? Let's go back up here now to our notes here. All right. The second bullet, it says, if cos theta is equal to a value k, where k is a real number, then theta is going to be equal to the cos inverse of k, right? The cos inverse of k, which is my alpha, and the general solution is theta equals plus or minus alpha, plus 2n pi, all right? So I'm going to calculate my angle alpha by finding the cos inverse of the k value, okay? So in this case, my k value is negative a half, all right? So alpha is going to be equal to the cos inverse of negative a half, okay? Good. And if you put that into your calculator, assuming that your scientific calculator is in radian mode, you will get two pi divided by three radians. All right, so my general solution theta is going to be plus or minus alpha. All right, so that's plus or minus alpha, which is two pi over three. Okay, plus two n pi, where n is a member of the set of integers. All right, you have to specify what n represents. All right, that's very important. Okay, so we're finished with part two. So we're at part three. All right, we're at part three now. So let's just take that off. So we're finished with part two. Part three now says that we want to find the general solution of two sine theta minus one equals zero. All right, two sine theta minus one equals zero. Minus one equals zero. Good. So I'm going to now make sine theta the subject of this equation. So I'm going to carry the one to the right hand side, the negative one, right? It will become positive. So sine theta is going to be equal to positive one. All right. So we did that, two sine theta equals one, sorry. All right, so we did that by just adding one to both sides of the equation. So I'm not gonna divide both sides of the equation by two, so I will get sine theta equals one divided by two. All right, so sine theta equals a half. So my general solution is going to be theta equals what? Let's go to our note up here, all right? So it says that if sine theta is equal to k, where k is some real number, then 
the sine inverse of k is going to be my alpha and the general solution is going to be theta equals negative one to the power of n multiplied by alpha plus n pi, where n is a member of the set of integers. All right, so let's calculate our alpha. All right, let me do it right here. So my angle alpha is going to be the sine inverse of a half. All right, so it's going to be the sine inverse of a half. And you should get pi over six radians as your answer. All right, assuming that your scientific calculator is in radian mode, of course. Okay, so my general solution for this equation is going to be theta equals negative one to the power of n multiplied by alpha, which is going to be pi over six radians, all right, plus n pi where n is a member of the set of integers. Okay, great. Now for the general solution for sine, right? There are different formulae that you can use, all right? But I think this one is the best one to use, all right? Rather than just remembering um, two different formulae, right? You can just remember this one, okay? So negative one to the power of n times alpha plus n pi, all right? Yes. So that is the end, all right? This is the end of the question. So I've now completed all three questions. I hope that you now have a better grasp of finding a general solution, right? In the calculus problem that I did yesterday, all right, for those who watched it, um, you'd have noticed that I that I wrote the general solution, all right, based on the solution that I observed from the graphs, right? So based on observation of the solution that you're getting from, from the equation, right, the infinite set of solutions, you can generate a general solution, all right? But in this video, I'm showing you how to use the formula, all right, how to use the formula for the general solution. Okay, great. And those who haven't watched that video as yet for that calculus problem, it will be at the end of this video once, once it is over. All right, so you can just click on it, okay? And if this video was helpful, please ensure to like up the video and comment down below. All right, I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and statistics. I thank you for joining.